and welcome to what is the second of our ITI technical spotlights where we we take a little bit of a deeper dive into some of the subjects that we covered in our inspiration through innovation global aerospace manufacturing best practice event back in October uh, today we're going to take a look at a closer look at in canal machining and the challenges that poses and I'd like to welcome my colleague John McGee um, Thank you, John is our product manager in the UK for turning and threading and advanced materials. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, everybody. <laughs> so John, I mean, we're looking in particular in Canal 718. It's, it's an extremely challenging material to machine and it poses manufacturers a lot of problems keeping them awake at night. Just wondering if you could just expand on those challenges that people face. Okay, thanks, thanks, Dave. Um, basically, when you look at um, in Canal machining, uh, or heat resistant super alloys, those types of materials, they all have their challenges um, and their constraints. Um, in canal, especially when we talk about the in canal component, you know, it's, there are challenges within the material itself, such as hard, work hardening, hard particles, inclusions in that type of material, which are very difficult to machine, low thermal con conductivity of the material. So that is really key when looking at machining or different types of mediums for cutting those types of material to make sure that you're at the correct temperature to, uh, to machine those materials. So you're talking about getting the cutting tool to the correct temperature to machine those materials? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so looking at those challenges, it, I mean, it's an extremely strong material as well, yeah. and like say the hardness. How does that influence the, the type of tooling that we select to, to machine these? How does it influence the tooling choice? Well, as, as the material, I've just spoken about the material, but some of the challenges that our customers will face is um, some things like um, very thin wall sections. Um, they'll have hooks, um, fins, those sort of things. They're, they're the real challenges of these types of materials. So when, uh, when looking for the, the right cutting tool for that um, application, it's very difficult to say, give an, a, bro, a, a brief overview of a cutting tool. But within those types of features. I mean, when we did the ITI um, feature demonstration, we tried, uh, well, we tried to include some of the more challenging features such as metal removal rate, that sort of thing, the fins on the thin walls, um, and some of the pockets as well. So you know, obviously there are standard tooling out there, but generally a lot of these features will need custom type fo uh, features. Bespoke applications. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just to take a step back there before we get to the, the sort of custom requirements for the you know these specific features you mentioned metal removal rate that is going to be a big challenge on on processing this kind of material so what sort of options do we have when we're looking at tooling selection for for processing these kind of materials yeah i mean traditionally carbide is used for for these types of material um ceramic um also pcd we're also looking at cbn as well so those are the those are the sort of choices of materials but also, um, there's also the the lubricants and that's what the MQLs, the um, CO2 machining. I mean, we'll, we'll cover that a little bit later with the future. Yeah. But uh, those are the those are the sort of choices you've got. And traditionally, you know, carbide is is the is the choice for finishing. So just to come back to you said carbide and ceramic. So you've got two options there, and I guess there's depending on the application, there's benefits to to using both, but also disadvantages to using both. So I'm just wondering if we could just have a little bit of a carbide versus ceramic discussion. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so from a from a carbide point of view, obviously traditionally carbide, okay. it really depends on the work holding constraints, the type of material you've got, the speeds you've got, um, surface integrity as well comes an issue. Um, so when using ceramics, traditionally ceramics will be used for the high metal removal rate when you're up at high speeds such as 250, 350 meters in some cases, depending on the hardest of the material, um, whereas carbide generally on in canal um, 30, 35 to 50 meters. So you've got various constraints there regarding that. Um, and there's also other choices such as, you know, if you're using um, small button tools to get into to, into tight features and stuff like that. So it's, it's very difficult. So there's a big difference there between, you know, the carbide and ceramic cutting speeds. I mean, yeah. what are we looking at depths of cut as well? So, I mean, traditionally, if you look at the process of machining a typical component uh, in ink canal, it will come in a forged type um, uh, 
feature and then obviously to to remove as much metal as you can you, you're talking about heavy you know sort of five to ten mil depths of cut so traditionally that would be carbide yeah and then the second process would be getting it to near net shape so there you could be using ceramics because it's near net shape and you've got say three to five millimeters to come off it and then when you get down to the finishing semi-finishing traditionally it's a, it's a carbide application so if, say for example i'm starting if we look at this component here on the table um if I was looking at machining that from a rough forging, would you go straight in it? You know, if it's a fairly rough component, straight out, you know, it, it's arrived in its sort of original state, would you use ceramics straight off? To be honest, um, I'd use a combination of possibly um, carbide to take the skin off, yeah. uh, to make it nice and clean. And then obviously in, in some features when using ceramics, you've got to have rolling in, rolling out, that sort of thing, or put chamfers on, exit chamfers as well to stop Bearing. Um, so I'll probably get rid of the skin with carbide and then um, hit the component. Obviously, if you've got the work holding um, and the machine capability with ceramics, yeah. because the, the high metal remover out of ceramics it far outseeds the uh, carbide. So when you mentioned about rolling in, we're talking about the approach of the tool to the yeah. component. So you, you just tell us a little bit more about So um, there's many ways. Um, this is basically talking about a um, ceramic features so in ceramic features you need to you can't just take constant depths of cut because you get that notching effect yeah um, so what we recommend is either having a chamfer there so you haven't got um, a very sharp edge that the the uh, cutting uh, insert is is actually hitting the component so you need to roll in to cut and it's best to roll out and, and that really leads to some some of the um, cam features that are, that are out on the market i mean particularly on this component we um we worked um closely with hexagon yeah using the waveform strategy okay, that's part of the edge cam cam package isn't it yeah and it, it it's, it's um it all within that package as well it also has a feature where you can see where um the wear on the insert is going to be almost likely where the um the biggest wear is going to be so you can actually use that cam software with the waveform to to sort of even out where the wear pattern is going to be where possibly where the notching is going to be because with ceramic machining traditionally you will get heavy notching and that's where the insert breaks down so we're, we're trying to give it the softest approach in and out of the material Absolutely. but also trying to keep the insert engaged as much as possible yeah. we're avoiding thermal shock we're trying to avoid notching on sharp corners and, mm -hmm. and any kind of sort of surface hardening that we may get yeah. into the components as well i mean I guess with ceramics with these high cutting speeds we're generating quite high forces as well and how does that influence the work holding do we need to take any special considerations when we're, we're holding components when we're using ceramics versus say carbide yeah i, I mean from a ceramic point of view ceramic um mm -hmm. if when we're talking milling or turning it does not like vibration whatsoever any vibration kills kills the inserts yeah. so you need to have um the component as robust as possible um, the tooling as short as possible to, to limit the amount of vibration you will get because there will be vibration in in any cutting process so in order to do that you, you know you've got to make sure that you you're i mean on this particular component we used a shunk with a wrap round um, chuck um, which made it really solid and it was um, a c6 uh, work holding um, and we kept that really short and angled on a, um, a multi-axis uh, type machine angled at 45 degrees so we could get maximum rigidity out of the process okay i'm just going to jump in there we've got a couple of questions coming in um one is asking what is the suitable wc grade for inking i saw carbide grade for so inking. a carbide grape uh typically from a seco point of view looked at ts2000 ts2500 for uh for roughing um, we have used uh in some typical components um cp500 um, and also we have the introduction of TH1000 or TGH1050, which is TH1000 on MDT. But these are all PVD coated grades. So PVD coating is a very thin coating, probably one to three microns. And, and having a thin coating on that uh, edge gives it a very sharp edge because you really need a sharp edge to cut these types of material. So, yeah, I mean, that leads me to a question I have myself about geometry. Obviously, geometry is absolutely key in these components. So 
we're looking at a sharp edge, but because of the strength of the material, we need some kind of protection on that geometry as well. Yeah. Um, typically, you, you will have some sort of edge honing on there, um, but really you want to keep it as sharp as possible, but with a protective land on that geometry. Next question we've got there coming in is, uh, how can we increase cutting speeds in machine and ink and alloys? Well, <clears throat> we've explored that a bit by looking at ceramics. Yeah. Um, well, uh, the, in, in answer to that question, Dave, um, I would say there is a couple of combinations you could use. I mentioned the waveform, hexagon waveform machine strategy where you're um, basically like a trichoidal type uh, machining um, action uh, but also if you have that in combination with a jet stream tool uh, for instance when we did this particular demonstration we used ceramic jet stream holders um, jet stream is getting that um, lubricant and uh, coolant right at the cutting point and that heat affected zone yeah so you're reducing the heat so when you reduce the heat, and i talked a little bit earlier about having um, you know the the correct uh, temperature cutting temperature yeah. to optimize that cutting condition when you're reducing the um, the temperature with high pressure coolant yeah. at the cutting point, then you need to increase the uh, speed to get back to that. So that that will automatically that elevates the cutting speed. Elevate yeah, the cutting cutting speed. speed. Okay. Um, there's a question here. You talked a bit about the dynamic turning, and there's a question here asking about the limitations of dynamic turning. And I guess whenever these kind of methodologies or these sort of strategies are released we, we can run the risk of getting a bit carried away and trying to apply it to everything but these really aren't a one-size-fits-all solution are they no so i just wonder if you talk about where you would use it but also what are the limitations of using a, a dynamic turning strategy when wouldn't you use it well from a, a dynamic turning strategy um ultimately most of the time you will increase feed rates so for instance in some of these particular uh, we have an application where we've got Inco 65, for instance, and we're running at a feed rate of point, uh, 1.2 millimetres. 1.2. Now, generally, <laughs> you're going to be around about 0.25 to 0.3 on, on these types of applications. So that's, that's, a, that's a great waveform um, example. Yeah. But if you've got a lot of material to remove and you're using big inserts, yeah. then obviously you are, you are going to use a more traditional method of taking 5 to 10 mil depths of cut yeah. at um at lower speed so that's that's really where the waveform doesn't doesn't have an application okay i mean we've talked a lot about turning john and turning is not the only no. application that we or or operation that we need to perform on these materials so i just wanted to talk a little bit about the milling side of it and maybe we could just sort of reference some of the work that we did on this in canal component during iti yeah, actually, uh, if I just sorry, turn this round so you can see, um, there was three particular strategies that we used on this. So um, on the first lot here, we we machined by plunging in, machining, coming out, and, and doing that sort of lacing effect. Right. Now, the problem with that is, you talked about it earlier, is the um, uh, thermal shocking. Yeah, because when it comes out of cut, it's cooling down and yeah. then it's going back into cut. Well, so we're not keeping that heat in. Absolutely. In the so area. with ceramics, you, you need to keep the heat yeah. in the cutting process. So we did three different strategies. One was a lacing, one was a constant. So you're going in, down, out, and, so and just basically ramping down, ramping down. Okay. And then the other was a um, trachoidal um, milling method. Now, out of the three. Um, the, the least effective was obviously the lace straight in and yeah. coming out so it's cooling down the next best effective was actually keep trying to keep it in constant cut but the, the from a um, tool life point of view the uh, the waveform milling strategy works extremely well probably gives on, on the solid carbide um, we've done some tests recently where we've had three times the tool life yeah. as opposed to those other two types of process okay i mean you, you've mentioned solid carbide there but that as with the turning carbide isn't our only solution for processing these materials no absolutely not so you know we, we've got we're, we're looking at you know um, um pcd cbn those types of um uh, materials for cutting these and also we've got indexable um ceramic milling uh, tools as well so 
there's there's a variety of things that we can use on this. So we've got the button which you can put in a indexable in circle to which we yeah. you know if we're using if we're looking at big facing operations that kind of thing or, or big slots um, or we've got this sort of ceramic indexable head mini master style yeah ceramic cutters that we've got that are, have just been launched yeah so um i mean there's a there's a number of options but there there are rules as well especially when using ceramics you, you've got to you've got to keep the cutter engaged as much as possible to obviously keep the heat there to stop the thermal shocking thermal shocking is, is a massive disadvantage heat and vibration absolutely, absolutely. kills yeah. every time uh we've got another couple of questions coming in so uh, one question we've got there, any good solutions for small part or component machining in Inconel 718? I guess, again, this depends on what the component yeah. looks like, what features you're producing on the component. I would say if, you, if you're looking at probably, uh, maybe that question is coming from a sliding head type application. Um, if you're looking at sliding head applications, then you need positive inserts yeah. with a good rake angles. Um, and obviously, if, if I mean, we, we've just launched um, a sliding head um, tooling solution right. along with um, TS2050 which is a very similar grade to TH1000 and TGH1050 which works exceptionally well in these types of material and with those with that um, new launch of the sliding head um, tool right. holders yeah. we have the jet stream technology as well which massively helps obviously with the um, the manufacturer uh, machine of these types of material so with a new grade and the jet stream again we're pushing those productivity levels up absolutely but again only if you it depends on this type of component doesn't it thin wall sections we're not going to be able to start elevating that no. sort of data and depth of cut too much okay and uh, another question we've been asked can you provide info about high pressure cooling when turning uh, i think that's one thing you definitely can cover absolutely up. so uh i'll give you an example of um in canal machining um generally with carbide, you're running sort of 40 meters, 35 meters, yeah, 40 meters. That's sort of for a long time, wasn't it? Um, we have elevated that to 90 to 120 meters when using high pressure jet stream. Um, one of the questions that a lot of people ask is, uh, does it matter if you've only got five bar pressure? Now, if you've got five bar pressure, obviously it's not going to be as an advantage of 70 bar or even 100 bar. But generally, as a rule of thumb. On the market 70 bar is 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 probably the area where most new machines are at yeah um, and that gives a massive advantage not only on the um, elevation of the cutting data but also swarf control as well yeah i mean you get that sort of hydraulic wedge effect with the yeah. higher pressure don't you that's lifting that that swarf off yeah. the off the insert the right face of the insert making it more brittle at that heat affected yeah, zone absolutely. and helps it break off yeah. a lot easier okay um we're just talking about cooling there and uh, i just want to say hello to our friends at wogard and there's a lot of cooling gets wasted we, we talk about sustainability and uh, when we look at our processes so much cooling gets wasted uh wogard have a great solution that we have on all our machines down there in, in the innovation hub where coolant can be recovered if anybody wants more information on that please reach out to our friends at wogard and ask about how you can make some massive savings and and be more sustainable by recovering coolant out of your process I think I said I think Jason actually said in in the um, ITI event he said what what the actual payback yeah figure was for that and it was it was phenomenal it was it was just that the the the, the figures that he came out was was just it was just it's a bit of an eye opener absolutely isn't it? Yeah. which money yeah. gets essentially flushed down the drain on a on a daily basis yeah, in absolutely. manufacturing and a lot of people sort of forget about coolant and and just talking we mentioned about coolant earlier and I guess maybe this leads to my next question really John about We've talked a lot about what we've got today, what technologies we've got on hand. We've talked about the grades, inserts, you know, the ceramics. But what's next? Yeah, are I mean, we, are we going to move things on in in yeah, machining? There's, there's a there's a big uh, emphasis on CO two machining, um, MQL machining, that sort of thing. But I think uh, ultimately, it's it's not going to be you know. Um, <laughs> CO2 is, is going to be effective with this. It's going to be a combination of maybe CO2 or MQ, MQL or high pressure yeah. in combination with a, a coolant delivery system, such right. as, say, Jetstream, for instance. Yeah. That, I mean, that, that will move on in, in, in some areas. But it's not, not just the coolant delivery, uh, and, and, and I'm, I'm no expert in coolant, but there is, um, there, there's obviously the types of coolant that you need for these types of material. Lubricity is is key in the cutting process. Yeah. 
So, you know, you need to be maybe eight to ten percent um, uh, mix on the on the on the coolant. Mm -hmm. You need to have high concentration of, of, of that type of mix. And you know, if, if we were talking earlier about the um, sliding head type machines, the majority of those are oil based Needs anyway. Need oil, yeah. Need oil. <coughs> so. Um, for me, and there's obviously a sustainability question as well. You know, if you're, everybody's using coolant, then they've obviously got to get rid of it. So it's a cost. It's an environmental. It's an impact environmental as well. impact as well. So, you know, yeah. I mean, even dry machining is is being banded around as well. So, I think the future is going to hold. You know, a, a different type of coolant um, uh, delivery yeah. um, alongside a different cutting type of um, delivery as well. So. So, for instance, I mean, we're looking at PCD machining. So, for instance, on PCD and ceramics, when when you're up at high high speeds, yeah. the surface integrity of the actual component in Inco 718 is much better right. than running at lower speeds. Okay. So, the emphasis is, is is on that. I mean, the majority of of people who are who are machining these types of material um, traditionally use carbide, mm -hmm. but the future, you know, I mean, the, the way the world is at the moment and and with this pandemic in 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 the in the mix, companies are going to look at cost savings. Yeah. So cost savings for that will mean better productivity. So they they they're going to reach out to to us uh, and cut into companies and say, how can we make this fa uh, quicker and more efficient? Because we need to make cost savings to try and be sustainable as a yeah. as a business. I mean, it, it's interesting what you said about the complementary technologies that are going to give us a step forward. Now, they're not technologies that we have as a company at Seco. We, we rely on our collaborative and technical Absolutely. partners, you know, people like Gemtech who supply us with the, the Vasco product, which is a, a great product for processing yeah. super alloys. And I think that's where the biggest gains are going to be is through this collaborative effort in moving technology forward. Mm -hmm. We can make a certain amount of improvement as a cutting tool supplier. We've already seen the impact that the CAD CAM strategies make, you know, through the use of sort of hexagons, dynamic turning, and then that coupled with the coolant technology, you know, such as the, you know, the Blaser product. It, it, it's a combination of all those technologies that are really going to start to to increase productivity and, and move things forward in, in this field. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, for any successful cutting process it's going to be a combination of 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 things that are that are going to benefit that so not any said. one particular no, advance no. it's going to be a combination of all these technologies absolutely moving things forward um we've got a few more questions coming in uh john um what strategy would you suggest to follow for thin wall parts for both turning and milling I guess we're talking very positive inserts. From Absolutely, start. yeah, very positive inserts. Um, depending on obviously work hold, work holding is key in these because obviously there's no low thermal conductivity in these types of material. The, the heat you've got to keep the heat away from the from the actual material. So if you've got very thin walls, such as you know, two three millimeter thin wall sections, yeah. then you've you've got to try and keep the heat away from the material as much as possible. Positive inserts, maybe even going into you know the PCD. Right. type where you've got sharp edges um definitely um jet stream coolant yep. high pressure <clears throat> again pushing um, that yeah. away from uh, that, yeah. and, and really you've got to, you've got to concentrate really on the speed because if you if you're too fast then it's going to warp once you take it off the fixture okay, you put a lot of distortion into uh into the part we did have a couple of questions they've just dropped off there just talk Okay, sorry, we're back on. Um, this is a product question, John. Do we have a wiper for turning 718? So we're talking about wiper geometries on, on turning mm -hmm. inserts. Uh, we, we do have wiper technology, obviously, in the inserts. Generally, I w depending on the component, I wouldn't probably recommend it on thin wall sections because obviously you're going to yeah, um, generate more it's heat. It's a large radius. Absolutely, yeah. So... Yeah, yeah, it's possible to use that on on certain types of components, but we do have that offering. But I mean, generally on on wiper inserts, you can only use it in 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 a linear yeah. uh, movement anyway. So when you've got radiuses or tapers, the wiper does not affect it at all. So you have to go back down to your normal speed, a uh, feed rate. Sorry. Okay. 
Um, again, another couple of interesting questions here. Do you think textured tools can improve the contact conditions to reduce the temperature and turning of ink and oil, um, considering self lubrication? So we're talking about a textured tool surface here, I, I, I think. And uh, maybe that's reducing the contact of the of the chip with, with the surface of the insert, maybe if I'm seeing that correctly. I'm not too sure about that question, but are, are they talking about a textured tool as in the coated on top of the insert? Or are they talking maybe 3D uh, mm. printed? Yeah, I think tools? if we can speak to those people directly, I think that's something that's definitely worth exploring and, and a question that needs to be answered. So if you want to send us your contact details and then we can get in touch and, and discuss this further. Um, got just, to, sorry, no, I was just thinking yeah. maybe it's they're considering self lubrication as in a, a texture on top of the cutting medium to create. So, for instance, you know, when you're machining cast iron, it's a self lubricating material. material. Yeah. In Inco 718, probably not that technology is not, not there. But again, if, if they want to get in touch, yeah, absolutely. We, yeah. we, we can look into that further. Uh, we've got another technical application question here. Um, we've got a customer who's turning big rings. 200 millimeter diameter with thin wall, um, outside diameter and inside diameter turning, and 80% of the parts are suffering deformation. I mean, what is the cause of this deformation? Now, there could be a number of things here. It yeah. may not be the cutting tool technology. It, it could be the work holding mm -hmm. for a start, um, the clamping of the component maybe, or it could be a question of lots of things that you've covered there, John. It could be a, you know, a too strong a geometry. Absolutely. Putting it's... a lot of force into that component. Gen generally on, on... Uh, distortion it will be a heat related uh, problem yeah um, and obviously as you said you, there's a number of factors in this but the biggest factor would probably be the amount of heat that they are yeah. um, dissipating into the, the workpiece itself so if they can reduce that heat maybe with a cool uh, you know jet stream technology yeah. then may be an advantage again i think that's another question that's worthy of follow-up if this is something that's causing you real concern in, in your manufacturing process then please get in touch we can send somebody in to have a look if possible and, and safe uh, or maybe some sort of teams or virtual meeting with yourselves and, and see if we can get down to the root of that problem and, and, and solve it for you or work together with you to solve it uh, another question we've got there john how would you compare the new cobalt based alloys to inco 718 machining that's a great question because um, it's, it's something I was going to touch on in the future. <clears throat> I mean, Inco 718 has been around for many, many years. Mm -hmm. There is a massive <coughs> development on new materials for these types of components. Yeah. You know, the powder met materials to make it a lot stronger, a lot more. I would say it's easier to machine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, years ago, Inco 718 was, was moon rock. Now it's yeah. quite simple to, to machine. Comparatively. Uh, yeah. Comparatively, yeah. Um, but there are materials that are being developed now that are going to be in the future, eight to ten years time in the future, which are very very difficult uh, materials to machine. Yeah. But the the material um, technology um, is 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 just moving at a very very fast pace. So uh, Inco seven one eight, you know, t compared to the new types of material, yeah, there is really no comparison because the new the materials are far more difficult to machine they have a lot less um, thermal conductivity so you know we're, we're 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 developing with with partners and collaborations to to machine these new types of materials so we are working tirelessly with these companies yeah we are i mean we're we're, we're not sitting still absolutely we're always looking to move forward on this and again if somebody has a particular issue there with a, an application and a difficult material please just get in touch um, and we'll work together with you to, to come up with a good solution, whether it's a cutting tool solution or a combination of things that will help us process those materials. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So I'd like to say a big thank you. That's all we've got time for today. There are still one or two questions coming in, but what we'll do, we'll endeavor to uh, answer your questions after this event. Um, I'd like to say a big thank you to all our technical partners that we work with. We have named them as we, we've gone, gone through. And I'd like to say a big thank you to you today john for your input um, oh, extremely you, valuable i hope everybody's found it useful um, if you want to see the recording of this or the recording of the demos from the inspiration through innovation event please visit secotools.com and follow the links on there and you can find the demo the recordings of the demos on that event so a big thank you for taking the time to listen to us and watch this space for the next session thank you thank you